have you ever looked at a project and be like, damn, I want to make that. And then you read the source code and you find out there's a lot of physics involved. Then you give up all hopes and dreams of ever reaching that level because physics is way too hard and just code snake instead. No, just me. Okay. Now for those of you wondering what the heck is a physics engine, physics engine is a computer software that provides an approximate simulation of certain... Basically, you're imitating how objects interact in real life in computer programs using the power of code and the laws of physics. You see them a lot in stuff like animations, games, 3D simulations, etc. Now that I've addressed the 1% of my audience, let's get down to business. We of course start by drawing a blank canvas. Now I want you to imagine that this environment is outer space. Hear me out. The point is to have as much control of our objects as possible. And we can't do that with Mr. Gravity hanging around. I assume it's a guy. Now we draw our first object, which is a red ball. Now we want to be able to move our ball around, right? This is when velocity comes in, which is the difference in position of an object between two consecutive frames. We do this by incrementing the position of our ball by the velocity. So let's say we want the ball to move right every one pixel, then the x velocity will be plus one. If we want it to move left, then it will be minus one. Then we're just throwing some key bindings and voila. Now it works fine, but it feels a bit stiff. It stops moving immediately, I let go, and it just feels unnatural and not physics-ish. Which brings us to acceleration. Change the velocity over time. Now the velocities themselves will be incremented by the acceleration value and instead of controlling the x and y velocities, we are controlling the x and y accelerations. It definitely feels a lot smoother, but now if we let go, it keeps moving at a constant speed. Why is that? Because it's in space? What? No, it's because there's no friction. What are you, stupid? Oh, sorry. What friction does is to decrease the velocity of our object by constantly multiplying it by a number between 0 and 1. Kind of like creating a restricting force that opposes the movement of the object. Now if we let go, the velocity reduces till it finally stops. Now these of course are still super basic and if we want to do more advanced physics, it's going to be a hassle to keep creating properties like this every time. Introducing vectors. In lame terms, a vector is just a line drawn as an arrow. It's defined by the direction the arrow is pointing and its length, also known as its magnitude. It's like giving direction to a friend. The direction will be something like 2 steps forward and 3 steps to the right, and the magnitude being how many steps it will take to get there. You can add, subtract, and multiply vectors quite easily, and they generally just make our calculations a lot easier. There's also something called unit vectors, a vector that always has a magnitude of 1. It's used for cases where you want to change the magnitude of a vector, but keep its direction the same. Now why would you need to do this, you might ask. Assume you want to simulate a car crash in a video game. You want to keep the direction of the velocity the same after the collision, but adjust its strength slash magnitude based on the impact. You just multiply the unit vector of the velocity by the desired magnitude. To find the unit vector, you simply divide each component of the vector by its magnitude. This is based on the principle of vector normalization in mathematics. There's also the normal vector, which is just a vector perpendicular to the original one, and the dot product, which takes two vectors and gives you a measure of how much the two are aligned with each other. If the two are pointing in the same direction, the dot product will be positive, if they are perpendicular, it will be zero, and if they are pointing in opposite directions, it will be negative. To see why vectors are important, just imagine doing all these calculations directly. Collisions are divided into three stages. Collision detection, which determines if there is a collision. Penetration resolution, which keeps them from phasing through each other. And finally, collision response, which determines how objects react after collision. The first two are pretty straightforward to implement. The collision response, however, is a bit complicated. This is what it looks like without any collision response. We implement collision response by applying Newton's law of conservation of momentum and conservation of kinetic energy. We first calculate the normal vector, which is the line drawn from the first object center to the second object center. We calculate its relative velocity, which is the difference between the two balls velocity, the separation velocity, which is the dot product of the two, and the new separation velocity, which is the normal multiplied by the opposite side of the old separation velocity. Then we apply them to both objects accordingly and we get... Now we just need to add boundaries to our canvas, which brings us to line collisions. The ball and line collisions also consist of the three stages, so I'm not going to waste time going too deep in the explanation, but basically all we need to do is to find the shortest distance d from the ball center to the line segment, and we do that by applying this formula. We can now detect a collision by simply checking if the value is less or equal to the ball's radius. If so, then there is a collision. The penetration resolution will be calculating the value of c, subtracting from the ball's radius, and then pushing the ball back by that amount. And for its collision response, we find the separation velocity by calculating the dot product of the ball's velocity and the normal of the closest point vector d. Then the new separation velocity will be the opposite of the old one times the ball's elasticity. By the way, elasticity is the result of the conservation laws I mentioned earlier, and it just determines how far an object separates after collision. Okay, now I feel we've done enough to add gravity back, so we're just going to do that. This to me is the simplest part about coding physics. 
Gravity is just a constant value that always increments the y acceleration of the objects in our world. I also wrote a simple listener to add new balls on mouse click. It definitely could use some improvements, but I'll leave that for some other time. Honestly, as a developer, you're most likely never going to need to write all this yourself. Even if you're like me that don't use game engines and just enjoys role programming, most languages have already written physics engines, all optimized for their respective languages. But regardless, no knowledge is a waste and knowing how it works behind the scenes will definitely give you an edge.